Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. When it comes to the way you show up, the way people perceive you, it all comes down to your image. And we're going to identify what some of the core classic styles are today that could connect with your image. She's somebody that helps people with this all the time. Not only is she the woman behind the International Image Institute, but she also trains people on how to do this. And she's back with us. Karen Brunger joins us on the show. Karen, welcome. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks. How are you? <clears throat> Very well. Learned a lot when we've gotten together in the past about color, about style. I'm going to uh, I'm going to inflate you for a moment, and with reason for that, uh, you are the sought after person when it comes to color coordination. I think color palette. I'm trying to think of the exact term for that. Like in the color in analysis. the yeah. color, color analysis. analysis. Thank you, thank you. In yeah. the world, you're the go-to <laughs> for that because um, you know your stuff, and of course, you help individuals define their style and find the right colors and all of that when they're trying to brand themselves. But also you teach people on how to do this as well. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking to be trendy, but sometimes that comes at a price because you got to always change it up. Core classic styles. What are we talking about there? Okay. So <clears throat> the core classic styles refers to, is, refers to the universal style system. And this was actually created by Elise Parsons, but I'm one of the authorized trainers um, for the universal style system. So I'm qualified to talk about it. Um, there, so it's a brilliant system. So there are three core classics that, and everyone would fit into at least one core classic. Some people fit into all three core classics. And so to find your core classic, there's you know nine different assessment tools. So it, it's quite mm -hmm. an in-depth process to identify what your core classic is. But to give you an idea about what they are, so the first one is called sporty and sporty is where you know our whole what we're really about is action and going out and doing things and being comfortable and casual and there's color there and there's energy so some people have that as their core classic where it's that that kind of active energy look right uh, so that's that's a core classic this a second core classic is called traditional and traditional is where we're more a little bit lower key of course uh you know traditional and it's good for credibility for going out there and making things happen in terms of um you know getting the business done so it's um yeah so it's yeah as it says it's traditional it traditional is a really good style for building relationships and um that this yeah it's really really good for letting people know that you know what you're talking about so that's traditional hmm. the third style is elegant and elegant is it's a little bit more of a prestigious look so that's where everything's a little bit more, more quieter but also more refined so it's very um you know very elegant monochromatic high quality very fine fabrics so it's more of that elite type of look. So everybody has, every single person has has at least one of those three core classics, right? Wow. So, yeah. How is it determined? What are some okay. of the criteria? Is so it criteria? Your, your personality? Yes, your personality. What is it? What are your functions? What do you need to be doing? What are your goals? You know, and so the and so your core classic can actually change on a you know every year. It can actually change because our goal, your goals might change. Who you are as a person might change. Um, it's also based on so it's based on the activities that you're doing. It's based on your also your body, your coloring, that your facial shape, um, what your hair does. Uh, your height, your bone structure. So uh, there are a lot of physical characteristics that can also come into it that that affect how what your core how your core classic is. Like your core classic is looking at you. It looks like you're probably sporty, elegant. The combination of those two, right? Because sporty, you know, active, getting things done. Ener you're an energy person, but elegant. You, you know, you seem to be like you're dressing in a monochromatic, very elegant, uh, refined way. Right. And are, are, are you are you saying that for me or is that yeah, that's, that's for you? And that um, and actually that's, that's my core. Those are my core classics is like I'm primarily elegant with some of the sporty. I'm never traditional, but yeah, <laughs> it, I, I think I feel you're on point in, in 
applying that to me, I would have to look at the others. What, you know, what is elegant, but when I show up, it's always got to have a bit of sport to it. I can't just show up with a jacket and tie. It's just not going to work for me. It's just, it's, it's either in the shoes. It's either in the, even if I wear a, a suit jacket, uh, whether it's with jeans or, or a suit, you know, top to bottom, I'll always have a shirt that has a little bit of something going on or the pocket square. It's got to have something or I'm, I'm bored. I just don't feel it. I'm, I'm not being true to myself. Right. Yeah. And those are the sporty elements. But the good thing is there's more than just the three core classics. So the three core classics, like any, whatever it is that we are, that's what we tend to go to like uh, for ease and to get the job done and maybe to go out and do our business. But there's also accent styles. Um, so the yeah. accent styles are creative, dramatic, romantic, and magnetic. Hmm. So that, that's where it's way out of my wheelhouse and most of us as well. And where you come into yeah. play. Cause I, I wouldn't even know where to, I need pictures. I need like reference points. Yeah. So that's where it does get more complicated. So that's why, you know, it's, it's easy to focus on the three core classics to say, okay, where might you fit in there? Um, you know, what serves you best. And then it also makes sense why when you're getting dressed, why these, you know, particular type of clothing seems to be more in alignment or easier to wear. Like, so for example, for me, and sounds like for you as well, if we were to put on like a, a traditional suit and have a, that, uh, like a, something very traditional, it would just say, oh no, get this off. It's just not right. Mm -hmm. But for another person, uh, like traditional is outstanding. It's like beautiful and it's so in alignment with them. It's just, it's stunning. But but for somebody that's not, that doesn't have that style, the traditional style, it just, it makes the, it would, they would look old fashioned and boring, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so, oh, it. so it really is identifying and be, and appreciating what your core, what your core classic is, right? So um, yeah, it's kind of fun. and. And each core classic has gets a different result. Like we said, sporty is very good for being comfortable and being active and getting things done, like getting things accomplished. Right? Um, when you're sporty, there's a there's that there's a fun to it. If you want to have fun, which I do, <laughs> sporty comes into it. Um, and it's just and it's really being comfortable, like putting on jeans and a t-shirt and sneakers or whatever, and just like going, just going. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's. Yeah, so so sporty is very comfortable. The the other one, the elegant, is like because there's a you know you can be both sporty and elegant at the same time. So if you're being, if you're, so the how you like how I would bring an elegant, for example, is I'm usually dressed monochromatically, like all in one color. Uh, I usually use very highly refined fabrics. So uh, you know, so there's an elegance to that it's it's a quieter it's a quieter look as opposed to the sporty which is hey i'm making things happen and i'm out there in the world with the bright colors right it's so it's interesting how to pull it together and i know there are some people that are all three at the same time they're sporty traditional and elegant all at the same time that's possible how do you blend all of this together depending on what you're doing well, dip, yeah, so depending on what you're doing, you could pull out more of one style than another. Like it could be that sitting how you are now, you're bringing up more, you might bring up more of your sporty style. Um, but let's say you were to go out for a nice dinner somewhere, then you might bring up more of your elegant style, right? Uh, for somebody that's traditional, if they might bring out the traditional style when, they, when they're going to a meeting or they're doing business or something, or where they have to really play it safe and they need people to approve of them, or they need to be able to get people on their side, then they might do more of a traditional style. This is fascinating because you need to figure out what's going to work for you based on your style, based on where you're showing up. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And with, but when it gets all together, there's there's an ease to it because then the right thing, you know, if your whole closet is right for your style for, you know, matches everything that you're doing, then there's an ease and that that what you just grab something that just feels right and you're out the door. Right. It just it, it all works once you know your style. So, I mean, when somebody buys something and they try to wear it 
and it just doesn't feel right, that means that that style is not in alignment with them. Sometimes we'll see somebody wearing something that we really admire. It's like, wow, they look so great. But then we try to wear the same thing and it's awful. It just doesn't work. So uh, it's, it, yeah, so there's a real benefit to, to knowing your style and then you can know what, to, what you're looking at in the stores, what to avoid. And the other nice thing about it is that there's, it's not that there's a right, there's no right or wrong way of dressing. There's just the way of dressing that's right for you, that's authentic for you, but it's, there's no such thing as making a mistake, right? It's just like some mm -hmm. like when I like sometimes when I used to do more corporate work, I would have to put on a more traditional style, which was so totally not me. But you know, you, I put it on. But I but, but when I did the more traditional style, then I had to bring out one of my one of my authentic styles in order for me to be comfortable. So, for example, like one of my accent styles is called creative. So I'd have to put creative earrings on or creative jewelry or okay. something it have to be, or it might be a more creative something. Right, just so that I'm I I'm not boring. I'm not boring. <laughs> right? You found you found a way to make it you. Yes, exactly. So that's what the universal style system is about. Is is yeah, you work with the core classics, and you and then some people have accent styles that they can put onto it. So this is what you do. Have you, Karen? Have you ever been challenged on not knowing what to wear? I'll give you an example. I went to an event two days ago. I couldn't decide what to wear. I'm usually good with this. And and I I also visualize going to the event before you even get there. Who's going to be there? Um, how are those personalities going to be mixing? What the dress is going to be? All of that. I, I visualize it. I know maybe I'm, I'm crazy. I'm not overthinking it. I'm putting myself there so I can have the best outcome for everything. Right. I couldn't decide what to wear. And I actually put I just threw things in my car. I was like, you know, it'll come to me later. <laughs> I'll make a decision. And I'm I'm thankful I didn't dress too um too dressy because it turned out to be even more casual than I thought. Um, I don't think you can ever, yeah. I always take it one notch up anyway. Um Ooh. what I wore was okay. It was fine. It was absolutely fine, but I couldn't decide. Does that happen to you? Oh, absolutely. And I think your strategy was really good. Like just, okay, just take clothes with you and then see what feels right. And so, and so that can also be like with layering or having that extra piece around that, oh, you know what, I'm just going to change this out. Um, so to be appropriate for the situation, especially if, you know, for going somewhere, we're not really clear on what, what would fit into that situation. hundred percent. And yeah. I even it took it down to the point where, and I'm not, I don't even, won't even get into what type of event it was. If I if I did, you'd laugh how it not the events, but how people showed up. But I even put a jacket in the car so that if I ever wanted to just dress it down with jeans um, and then shoes, shoes can make the difference between all of it, right? They really can. So when it comes to getting the whole image together, the three main things that you want to have really current and like really right for you are your hair your eyewear and your shoes. So those are the three points you want to make sure that they're they're nice quality, you know, everything's nice quality, it's good, it's working for you, it's right for you, it's in your color palette. And then uh yeah, and then the rest, mm. the rest just comes in. Okay. Eyewear. Let's go there. Okay. I struggle with that. I don't have to wear glasses, but it can help from time to time. Um I struggle with what to what to get. Like I'm currently on a recently got frames that are almost clear wanted to change it up i actually left them in the car um you know whether it's bigger whether it's smaller rectangle there's so many choices there like how do you how do you figure that out okay well that's exciting okay so let's go with the size of the eyewear first of all the size of the eyewear typically would be in proportion to your height so taller people can wear bigger frames shorter people smaller frames that's that's very general the other oh. thing to look at would be um your bone structure so if you have a more fine or medium, me, fine to medium bone structure, you want frames that are not too chunky. They, you want them to have a, a lighter uh, frame, like a, like a wire frame or something very thin. Okay. Whereas if your bone structure is more medium to strong, then you want a chunkier, thicker frame because then it's in proportion to the bone structure. The shape of the eyewear is based on the shape of your face. So your face looks pretty oval. 
And so your your frames, now you do have some, a little bit of chiseling. Actually, our facial shapes are pretty similar. Um, uh, oh, here, let me put my glasses on. Okay. <laughs> so my glasses are wire framed because I have a fine bone structure. And you can see I have an oval shaped face with more curve. So these glasses have more curve, but because I have some creativity, you see how there's this little fun pointy thing coming out. That was out. the first thing my eyes went to. Yeah, plus it helps to give me a facelift. <laughs> So, um, wow. and also the other thing to look at, so the, the frames are the same width as my, as my face and my eyes are in the center of the lenses. You see how the frame is this cover, uh, follows my eyebrows. So that's what you want to look, be looking. Those look like they, you look like the poster when you go into the eyeglass place <laughs> that, that they put up, you know, here's the way it should look. And yeah. the first thing, you know, the round, this is my personal opinion, the round was fine and it, and it, and it definitely supports and fits you. But the fact that you changed it up over here with that frame yeah. adds a cool vibe to it, breaks that circle. Um, this yeah. is why you're great at what you do. Like, whoa. <laughs> And that also of course, cool. the color is my color. So for you, um, you know, because you have more angle, then you can have more or less an oval type of frame, but with with some angle to it, if you want, right? Like not okay. not a, not as like maybe a little bit rectangular, but not an extreme rectangle, but that in the, that kind of a range. Yeah. Gotcha. And um, color, you know, of frames. Now your yours are wire frames, so you wouldn't see the color so much. Right. Um, but I'm sure there's there's something going on there we're not seeing, you know, on the right. zoom. Yeah, because my frames are like a pewter color, like a, a charcoal y, like a dark gray, flat gray. Which so flatters the, your hair. It does. And the, so the reason I chose these is because my 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 coloring is very flat or matte. It uh, I absorb light. I'm not a shiny, vibrant, like bright person. And so this is a flatter metal um that goes with my complexion and the color being it's cool and i'm cool so my best metals are always in the silver pewter like um like antique silver category so that's why these are working so well well this also has a little bit of navy blue and red at mm. the bottom so they're not even strictly charcoal um they have some of my color in there so the blue of course i have blue eyes so the blue reflects the eyes and then this is a cooler red which of course reflects like the complexion, lip color, that type of thing. Wow. You know, there's so much to this. We don't even think some of yeah. us just get lucky. We throw something on, it looks good. Like, all right, done. Um, in terms of the color of glasses, I tried um, like a blue pair of glasses and uh, I thought it might work, but when I got it, it, it was a little more of like, a, it was plastic, but it was more of a metallic-y looking blue. And it was just too, it was too much. Uh, so I sent those back. You can just return them. Um, what color would work for me? What do you think? Okay. So there are blues that like everybody has a blue. So it's a matter of getting the right blue. So for you, you look like you would be suiting, like you could do like a turquoise blue. The main thing with your, with your blues is they cannot be muddy. You know, you don't want... Um, or that's at least what I'm perceiving just because I haven't done your color analysis, but you're looking like you might be more warm than cool. Um, you know, that we have, like you can compare our complexions. You have a more peachy golden look, whereas I'm more ashy rosy. Mm -hmm. okay? so that's at least what I'm seeing here on camera. Yeah. Um, so in that case, you would go, if you want blue, you would want like a brighter blue, like a, you're, you're good in those clear translucent frames, you know, like the, <laughs> the frames that are kind of see-through. That's well, that's the one that's in my car that I recently got. And I got that with the blue. Um, but the blue was just a too like it was too blue. It was too right. it needs to be more of a you now call it a hint of blue, a little bit more right, than yes. a hint of blue. Yes, okay. you can do a hint of blue. Um, final question based on my coloring, and I just mm -hmm. find this fascinating the way this works, but this is how we show how you work. Um, what other color would work if I wanted to get out of you know the black of the clear is you know over to the side? Um what color would I pick? You're very good with golden browns. So you could do gold, like for frames, you could do gold, but in your clothing, you can do golden browns, cream, like, um, so your whole, your whole color family is light, bright, and golden. So cr you're actually good in turquoise and cream and robin's egg blue and That's lilac. That's me. That, that, that. Golden I mean, brown, yeah. I don't so, have anything in brown. I don't have anything in gold. Um, I have, you know, 
red flannel. It's the only red thing I have. And that's, you know, you wear that twice in the fall and you're done. Um, I just don't, I've never looked at those colors. You know, the, the browns are just drabby to me. And it's just what you said. The kind of the teals, the blues, uh, yeah, sometimes purple and black. Black always looks good on me. That, and people tell me that too. Yeah. Well, black's a, you know, black is, um, yeah, a color that it adds that stability, you know, gives that st stability look and also a current look. So, um, but yeah, like, I, I, gee, I wish I could put colors on you right now so we could see what actually is working for you. It would be cool. Because your eyes yeah. also look very bright, like they're, you know, they're bright and blue. So that's also a clue of, um, of a of a lighter brighter warmer palette um if that's the case so, so then your darker colors would be like a, a light navy blue like not a too dark of a navy blue but a lighter navy i agree uh, yeah and and so you'd be better in turquoise rather than teal because teal gets a little bit heavy for you so there are some and some of the browns will be too heavy that's why they have to be browns like more butterscotch honey caramel uh cinnamon nutmeg Paprika, you could do spices, paprika, cayenne. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is, I find it fascinating, the whole process here. And when you work with somebody, of course, you teach this, and that's, you know, one of the main things that you do. Uh, when you're finding somebody's color palette, are you doing what I visualize the old school thing where it's a swatch of color next to you? Oh, no, let's try this one. No, nope, let's try this color. Still yeah. being done? That's really, that's what we're doing. And we're comparing colors. So we'll put <clears throat> one color on and then another color over top. And then as we take away the top color, we see, okay, how does the face, what happens to the face? Like, so I don't know, like you could have, if you have even any other piece of fabric or color lying around, you could even try it right now. Like put up another color underneath your face. I don't know. Let, then... me grab one. Let me see if it works. I, I mean, I, got, <laughs> I don't know if it's enough color. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. The only thing I have is like a, this is just a hoodie that was laying here, but this okay, is more, right, this is so blue. blue. Okay. All right. So when you put that up underneath your face, say, look at, so it's really lifting up your face. You see how your eyes are sparkling, mm. right? And then, right? Yeah. Compared to when you don't have it, you, your eyes are really coming out nicely with that blue. Interesting. Yeah. This yeah. is actually an old hoodie and, and it looks brighter on camera than it really is. Mm -hmm. um, but I've had this forever and just to your point i don't know why i like it but maybe what you're saying is it has a certain look and i've got other ones that you know are sort of in the blue family um they don't do what this does and and this is it's almost like a it's hard to even explain but it's almost got like a little bit of you know texture and white to it okay um, all right but it makes yeah. it you know, a little I, you know what looking at what you're wearing it mm. almost looks like that because you have a different type of tones Right. So yours awesome. is more of a cobalt blue. I see a little bit of green in that blue, whereas the blue I'm wearing has a little bit more purple in it. Okay. So this hmm. is a purpley blue. So, but the greeny blue, like that, that's another, that's another thing that would be nice on you is the blue that has a bit more of a green, like a cobalt blue. Um, that kind of uh, greeny blue is really good on is what's really working for you. And the other thing would be to make sure your blues are more clear as opposed to muddy, right? Because hmm. if you wear something muddy. Oh, I just got a picture of it in my mind. If you put something muddy on, you would actually turn gray and kind of pasty. And you know what's interesting? If you can't on a Zoom here, uh, unless we zoom in and all that, yeah. you can't see, but my eyes are blue, but there's a hint of green, which yeah. stands to reason why what you're saying would yeah. tie everything together, at least with, with, with my coloring. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, that's uh, the whole process is, I, I'm. it's fascinating because it's so important you know, how you show up, what you're wearing. Style is one thing, but, you know, color is another thing. Yes. You know, you could have the perfect uh, fitting jacket, dress, whatever it might be. If it's not the right color, you just wasted your time. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Wow. yeah for uh, me, color is number one, for sure. This is just a sampling of what you do with the International Image Institute. Uh, certainly teach this so people can make it their life's work to help others doing what we just described here. How do we find you, Karen? Um, oh, my website is imageinstitute.com. Gotcha. And yeah, you know, for somebody looking for a color analysis and color palette and all of that, um, and also to teach, they can reach out to you the same way. 
Right. Yes. Yeah. So the the website that website has information on the different training programs that we offer, and there's also a link, direct link to our web store, which has all of our color analysis tools, our oh. image consulting tools, all kinds of resources are on, and there's some for free as well on our web store. So yeah, people can check out both of them. <laughs> I've been to your site, and I don't recall seeing a web store. So I will definitely be checking that out. Yeah. I think I don't I can't remember what the tab is called it might be like shop or or it might just be store I'm not sure but yeah you right. can you can go there and click and we have like over 200 products I think but we're wow. I think we're the number one supplier in the world for color analysis tools so most people get their swatch wallets and their tools for doing color analysis yeah we have all of that Awesome Karen thank you so much for today really appreciate it Okay you're welcome thanks for having me We'll be right back are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.